The PowerPad 3 Model 8336 is a three-phase power quality analyzer that is easy to use, compact, and shock resistant. It enables technicians and engineers to measure and carry out diagnostics and power quality work on one, two, or three-phase networks. The instrument is IEC 61000-4-30 Class B compliant and safety rated to 600 volts Category 4. The Model 8336 is designed for use in the field with direct access to configuration and measurement data. It includes five voltage input connections facilitating four voltage measurement channels and four current input connections for four current measurement channels, automatic current sensor recognition, one quarter of VGA graphical display, the ability to identify and record up to 210 transient measurements, true inrush current detection, and options for configuring and detecting up to 40 different alarms with the ability to store 10,000 events. These are just a few of the Model 8336's capabilities. For details on all its features and functionality, consult the documentation that comes with the instrument. In part one of this two-part video series, we explain some of the basic functions of the Model 8336. We begin by helping you become familiar with the instrument's user interface. We then describe general instrument configuration. We conclude by demonstrating how to set up, run, and save a recording session on the instrument. This video is designed to provide a hands-on experience. As we explain each task, we suggest you follow along using your own instrument. We encourage you to proceed with this video at your own pace. If there are tasks you'd like to repeat, simply stop the video and go back to the beginning of the task. Conversely, feel free to skip any topics with which you are already familiar. Before you begin, do the following. If the instrument battery is not fully charged, connect the power supply to the instrument. This will ensure the instrument remains powered throughout the duration of the video. Then turn the instrument on. If you need help with either of these tasks, consult the instrument's user manual. With the Model 8336 powered on, Let's take a moment to become familiar with the instrument's front panel interface. This includes a large, bright, 320 by 204 pixel color quarter VGA display for displaying measurements and configuring parameters. At the bottom of the screen is a set of icons that correspond with the yellow function buttons immediately below them. Each icon represents the function performed by its associated button. Icons are context sensitive. Different screens display different sets of icons. The currently selected icon appears in yellow. Unselected icons are gray. Below the function keys are three additional set of buttons. On the left is a column for buttons that, top to bottom, return to the previous screen, displays the configuration options menu, takes and displays snapshots, displays context sensitive help. To the right is the arrows keypad. Use these in conjunction with the Enter button to navigate, highlight, select, edit, and save options and parameters. Below these are six buttons for selecting the instrument's operational mode. Waveform Capture Mode enables you to display and capture transients and inrush events. Harmonics Mode displays harmonic levels for voltage, current, and apparent power, order by order. Waveform Mode displays current and voltage graphs along with measured values and those calculated from voltages and currents. Alarm mode displays overages of programmable thresholds for a variety of parameters. Trend mode records changes to specified parameters. And power and energy mode displays power and energy measurements. The full use of these buttons is described in detail in the user manual. Finally, at bottom left is the on-off key. On the top of the Model 8336 is the input panel, consisting of four current and five voltage input connections for connecting sensors and probes. Each input is labeled to ensure correct hookup to the distribution system under test. In this video, we will connect the Model 8336 to the AEMC AC Digital Signal Generator Model DSG-8. This device simulates waveforms for AEMC PowerPad, PowerPad 3, and PEL series instruments. The DSG-8 can create simulations for any AC distribution system supported by these instruments, including capturing transients, inrush, and alarm events. The DSG-8 output leads are labeled to ensure correct connection to the Model 8336 inputs. 
Our first task involves setting basic instrument configuration parameters. With the instrument on, press the configuration button, labeled with a wrench icon, to display the configuration options screen. By default, the daytime option is selected. If not, use the arrow buttons to highlight it. Then press the enter button to display the daytime screen. Check the display date and time. If it differs from the current date and time, press enter to select the settings. Then use the arrow buttons to change the date and or time. When finished, press enter. The daytime screen also lets you select the date and time formats. To change these, use the arrow and enter buttons to highlight, select, and change the settings. When finished, press the configuration button to return to the configuration options screen. Use the arrows to navigate to and highlight electrical hookup, then press enter. In our example, we will connect to a simulation of a three-phase, five-wire hookup, so we will select this option and then press enter. You will now return to the configuration options screen. Use the arrows to navigate to probes and ratios and press enter. This screen lists all connected sensors, which are automatically detected and identified by the instrument. Press the first yellow button on the left, under the V icon, to display the voltage ratio screen. This lets you select the primary to secondary ratio for voltage channels. You can also choose whether to use the same ratio for every line or assign a unique ratio for each. By default, the ratio setup field is highlighted. Press enter to select this setting and use the arrow buttons to change it. In our demonstration, we will choose to have different ratios for every line. Press enter to save the selection. Press the up and down arrows to navigate through the list of voltage ratios and press enter to edit a setting. Feel free to spend a few moments experimenting with the voltage ratios and observing how the measurement reacts. For example, set a voltage ratio, then press the waveform measurement button and observe the change to the displayed data. With the Model 8336 configured and connected to a hookup, or in our case, a hookup simulation, we can now view measurement data in real time. For instance, the default display screen that appears when you first power on the Model 8336 is the waveform screen. This screen includes its own set of function button icons for displaying true RMS values, total harmonic distortion calculations, crest factor values, minimum, maximum, RMS, and peak values, a variety of measurements in tabular format, and a real-time phasor diagram. Before setting up a recording session on the Model 8336, ensure the instrument time and data are correct. Also ensure the appropriate hookup setting is selected. These topics are covered earlier in this video. Press the Trend Mode button. If there are no recordings stored in the instrument, the recording scheduled screen appears. If there are stored recordings, as is the case here, the recording list screen is displayed. In this situation, press the yellow function button under the disk icon to display the recording scheduled screen. This screen enables you to configure, start, and schedule a recording. In our example, we will begin by selecting measurements to include in the recording. So press the Configure Function button on the left to display the Trend Mode screen. At the bottom of the Trend Mode screen are a set of function button icons. From left to right, pressing each button displays the next page of quantities, displays the previous page of quantities, cycles backward through a series of four programmable configurations, cycles forward through these configurations, selects all available quantities to be included in the recording, and deselects all available quantities. Use the arrows to navigate through the displayed quantities. Select or deselect a quantity to record by pressing Enter. In our example, we will include all quantities. Note that some quantities may appear in red. This indicates the parameter is unavailable for the selected configuration due to incompatibility with the hookup type, disconnected sensors and probes, or other factors. For example, if no current sensor is connected, all current quantities appear in red. Also note that Hertz is always selected. Now we will schedule the recording. Press the back button to return to the recording schedule screen. 
This displays five input fields. Setup identifies the configuration preset, one through four. Start defines the time and date when the recording starts. This must be later than the current date and time. Stop specifies when the recording ends. This must be later than the start time. Period defines the aggregation period. This is the time over which the measurements are aggregated. Name allows you to name the test. This can be eight characters long. Use the arrow and enter buttons to highlight, select, and edit the start and stop fields. For our demonstration, we will set start for a few minutes past the current time and stop one hour past the start time. We will also set the period to one second and give the recording the name Video 3. Note the memory usage bar at the top of the screen. This indicates how much memory is available for storing recordings. If this indicates little free memory remains, return to the recording list screen and delete one or more stored recordings. Press the last yellow function button on the right to write the settings to the instrument. Before a scheduled recording starts, the message Recording on Standby should appear at the top of the screen. This indicates all scheduled parameters have been accepted by the instrument and that there is sufficient memory for the recording. While the instrument is in standby, the rightmost function button changes to a hand icon. This enables you to stop an active or pending recording. In addition, the play icon at the top of the screen blinks, indicating that the instrument is ready to record. This icon blinks throughout the active recording session. When the recording is active, the message Recording in Progress appears on the screen. As a good practice, before you run a long recording, or one at a remote site, we recommend running a short test recording and viewing it to ensure it contains meaningful data. This helps identify issues, such as current probes connected in reverse directions or incorrect current and voltage phase connections. When your recording is finished, you can view it in the instrument's recording list. If the recording schedule screen is displayed, press the yellow function button under the folder icon. If any other screen is displayed, press the recording button. Either action displays the recording list screen. If more than one recording is stored, use the arrows to select the desired recording, then press enter to open it. The first page of the recording shows basic information, including the recording name, the start and stop times, and the sample period used. In the lower right corner is the page number, which in this example indicates we are looking at the first page of a 48-page recording. The number of pages is determined by the number of quantities selected in the trend configuration screen. Press the page function button on the far right to cycle through the pages. As you do this, the remaining function buttons refresh to correspond with the data contained on the selected page. To view a parameter, press this function button. For example, to view voltage root mean squared data, press VRMS. At the top of the screen are the RMS values for the phase inputs. On the right is a column listing the phases. By default, all phase data is shown in a single display. Use the up and down buttons to view data for individual phases. The center of the screen shows the data graphically. Pressing the left and right buttons moves the cursor to different times within the graph. As you do this, the minimum, average, and maximum measurement values at the top of the screen refresh. Use the zoom in and zoom out buttons to view the graph in more detail. And for some parameters, the min and max function buttons allow you to quickly navigate to the first occurrence of the minimum and maximum value, respectively. When finished, press Enter to return to the previous page. This concludes part one of our video series about the PowerPad 3 Model 8336. In part two, we explain how to connect the instrument to a computer running the DataView PowerPad 3 control panel. We then demonstrate how to configure the instrument view data in real time, set up and run a recording session, download recordings, and create reports from this data. Bear in mind we have only touched upon a few basic functions of the Model 8336 to introduce you to the instrument and get you up and running quickly. Many other features are available, including selecting viewing modes, setting alarms, taking data snapshots, and choosing from a variety of display options.
These and all other Model 8336 features are discussed in detail in the user manual that comes with the product. You can also receive guidance directly from the instrument by pressing the Help button. And be sure to check our YouTube channel for instructional videos on other topics in electronics, including the many products offered by AEMC.